<laughs> I'm going to start off by reading a poem here. And it's one of my favorite poems, and it does offer a really beautiful addition to what Stuart was saying and a really beautiful addition to what everybody is going through. And as you may know, Rumi was a Sufi, uh, one of the original of the Sufis, not the original, but one of the beginning Sufis. And I believe, I may be wrong here, but I believe it was Rumi who started the tradition of the whirling of they call it semi, I think, in Turkish, where <clears throat> people will stand up and one hand goes up and one hand goes... It's hard to do this on the camera. <laughs> one hand goes up and one hand goes down and you go counterclockwise. And I've tried this when I was in Turkey and it's definitely not easy for me because after about three whirls, I start to feel like I want to throw up. But I'm told if you keep on going long enough, you stop turning and the whole world turns around you. And you can go to a very, very elevated place by doing this. And I've seen people go into amazing states of consciousness when they're whirling. And it's very beautiful and it's very old. So Rumi when he's talking about dancing here, he's talking about that type of dance. And when he's talking about dancing, he's also talking about the dance that happens inside of us. So he says, the first line is so beautiful, dance when you're broken open. You know, right, right there is the recognition that we do break. We do have difficulties. We do have times where Everything literally seems hopeless. Everything seems like it's too much. Everything seems impossible. How can I go on when I'm feeling this? But he says dance when you're broken open. Dance when you've torn the bandages off. You know, what, what's going on now is that our bandages are being torn off. As you were saying, Stuart, the distractions are gone. You know, all of the things other than Netflix or Prime <laughs> that we're so used to turning to. You know, I'm bored. I can go out to dinner. Let's go out to dinner. Let's go out for breakfast. I'm going to go sit in the coffee shop and drink coffee and Maybe not interact with people, but at least I'll be around people. There's no coffee shops where you can go and sit and drink coffee anymore. It's all to go. You know, things like family gatherings are gone or should be gone because according to the current research, it's the family gatherings that are actually even more places of danger of getting illness than going to a bar. So those things are basically gone. You know, take a vacation, where? Croatia and Zambia and Namibia. Now Morocco is open, but not a lot of the world is open for vacations. And the safest thing so far is to stay in your home where the bandages get torn off because the distractions are gone where we suffer. Dance in the middle of fighting. Dance in your own blood. You know, so this is a serious thing that he's talking about here, is that we may be bleeding inside. We may be suffering. We have to continue to go on, continue to dance and dance when you're perfectly free. So whatever the state that we're in, it's necessary. It's, I've been saying it since the beginning of this whole thing. This is not like a nice spiritual thing. This is survival strategy. This is survival. And this is not going to end soon. 
as far as I can tell. I mean, maybe some miracle vaccine will pop up tomorrow and it'll all be over, but I don't think so. I think we're in for at least another six months to a year of challenge here. And then what do we go back to? (laughs) That's the big question. We can't go back to what it was. We've all changed. You know, it's like we're in forced retreat. We're in forced seclusion. We're in forced watching much of what used to work for us go away. It's very difficult. We're bleeding. We could be bleeding. Dance when you're perfectly free. I'm going to read the whole thing again. Dance when you're broken open. Dance when you've torn the bandage off. Dance in the midst of fighting. Dance in your own blood. Dance when you're perfectly free. And then he goes on. Struck. The dancer hears a tambourine inside her. Like a wave that crests into foam at the very top begins. This is the reality that inside of us we do have an infinite amount of joy to resource. If this time is about anything else, it's about resourcing the joy within, independent of what's going on. Even if we're bleeding, the tambourine music is still playing inside. Maybe you don't hear that tambourine or the tree leaves clapping time. Close the ears on your head that listen mostly to lies and cynical jokes. There are other things to see and hear. Music, dance, a brilliant city inside your soul. I would say a brilliant universe inside your soul. So how do we go from loneliness and addiction behaviors and feeling nothing is real and stress and hey, so much? How do we find this possibility? inside of us? This is the question. And the thing is, you're not going to find that possibility inside of you unless you look for it, which is very difficult right now. It's like nothing's happening. I'm bored. I wish I could just like do something today that was different and I'm supposed to sit and meditate? (laughs) Go from utter boredom to extreme boredom? Because I know most people think about meditation as being a boring process. Or many people do. So what am I supposed to do? You know, the the depression, the stress, the all these things that we're all going through right now are really totally normal and okay. Even if we're bleeding on the floor. They're totally okay. Because in a way, this is the reality of life. When we've torn the bandages off, the bandages are the distractions. The bandages are, oh yeah, anything is okay. For me, I mean, this has been like such an intense process for me. Because I I started off this whole uh, quarantine seclusion process by Um, losing a relationship that I was very deeply moved by and very deeply nourished by. And, you know, suddenly that was gone. Like one phone call. And so as I feel that loneliness, as I allow myself to feel, the loneliness has attached to it judgments. that it's not okay to feel 
what it is that you're feeling. You know, in a way, society that we live in is very shallow because it negates, in many ways, these emotions. When somebody says, how are you doing? Say, I'm doing really poorly and see what happens. If they're not close to you, if they don't care, they're going to disappear. Because it's not okay to not feel perfect. But it is. This is really important to understand and to grasp. That if I am feeling stress, if I'm feeling loneliness, if I'm feeling depression... Going back to last week, if I'm resistant to it, it's blocking off a certain part of who I am. It's ending my relationship with a part of myself that this time period is bringing up for healing. So can you sit with loneliness? Can you really sit and feel it and not be judgmental? Because it's the judgmentalism that causes us to feel like what we're experiencing is not okay. You know, I grew up with a father that no matter what was going on, was like, I'm doing great, everything's good. Everything's fantastic, you know. Your father just died. Oh, okay. You know, your brother just died. Oh, okay, I guess I'm the last one. You know, an inability to go deep into feelings. And, you know, so I think with each person, this is something that exists, is if I feel sad, can I feel sad? Can I just feel sad without telling myself a big story about why I feel sad? Let me go deeper into that. Because there's two things that are going on. There's what I'm feeling and there's how my mind tries to explain it to me. What's the story? Do I need a reason to feel sad? Do I need a reason to feel joy? Do I need a reason to feel peace? Do I need a reason to feel stress? Because where am I feeling these things? Is the stress really out there? Sometimes it is, but is it really out there for you right now? If, like my friend who doesn't watch television, doesn't read the news, doesn't have political conversations, doesn't know what's going on, and is perfectly happy in her life right now, perfectly happy, living on a beach in Bali, Sounds good to me, you know. But if I'm not externalizing the source of my feelings, I can then deeply feel what's happening inside of my body. And by deeply feeling what's happening inside of my body, I can create the space for it to heal. See, because awareness, one of the things I've been working with since I started doing healing work is... Uh, Awareness is curative. Awareness heals. And I learned that. I think, uh, Hannah, you may have done Est, I think, or something, the forum. Life Spring. Life Spring, Back okay. in the 70s, Life Spring. Yeah, I heard, you know, you the won't say... The one with the heart. Yeah, you won't say but, you say and, so that's usually a, a key there. But what I learned there was, was what they call the headache process, and it's basically, if you get a headache and you just focus on the headache in many different ways, without judgment, without stories, the headache goes away in about five to ten minutes. And I've done this process on dozens of people, hundreds of people maybe. 
and it really works, is because it's the resistance to feeling what you're feeling that causes pain. So I may have a feeling inside of me. I can look at it. I can feel it. I can examine it from many different directions. Or I could name it, create a story around it, and the creating, naming it and creating a story around it perpetuates it. How would you know you're depressed if there wasn't a name for depression? You know, it's, it's the curse of the diagnosis. You know, the ICD-9 book is now thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of different illnesses. A lot of them didn't exist a few years ago. Keep on creating more illnesses. <laughs> the, you know, original psychiatric, do- uh, psychiatric diagnosis was, what was it called? Neurasthenia. Neurasthenia. That covered depression, anxiety, you know, loss of um, awareness of self. It covered everything. It was just one night. Now there's tens of thousands of diagnoses. There's many different kinds of depression. There's many different kinds of anxiety. There's many different kinds of stress. There's many different kinds of every mental illness you can think of or emotional disturbance. So what does it mean to feel what you're feeling without putting a name on it? And personally, for me, when I do that, when I just sit with what I'm feeling, and I learned this years ago, I went through a very difficult relationship breakup, and nothing that I was doing was giving me any relief at all from the pain I was feeling. And uh, I used to go to a gym pretty much every day, twice a day sometimes, and I went into the steam room, And I was alone, thank God. And I lay down and just focused on what I was feeling in my heart and focused what I was feeling in the way I was breathing and focused and feeling everything that was going on in my body without naming it. That's the important part. Because as soon as something gets named, you disempower yourself. You get disempowered. So without naming it, just feeling, 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 going deep, breathing in the steam, saunas also work for this. So does sitting in your room. But I needed the steam room to propel me into this realization. And I sat, I lay there with it, maybe for half an hour, just razor focused on every sensation in my body. And when I came out of the steam room, that total broken-hearted, tragic story I was carrying was gone. Because I processed through the tactile, sensate awareness of it. If you're depressed and you sit and you feel it without calling it depression, you can gain power over it. And by focusing on just the sensation in the body, you can go past it to the root of it and allow the roots of it to heal. Same thing with loneliness. I mean, this is not the way we as human beings are meant to live. We are social, tribal creatures. We should be living in villages with no more than a few hundred people in the village. That our parents and grandparents and great grandparents and great great grandparents and great 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 grandparents also were in that village. So everybody is connected. Everybody knows everybody else. Everybody is supportive of everybody else. Everybody cares about everybody else. And everybody helps everybody else. But because of 2020, You know, the last couple hundred years, really, we've lost that structure. 
and something new needs to be created. So God created Zoom. Yeah. No, but something new needs to be created that involves community and involves coming together in a way that may not have existed before. Hence Zoom. You know, right now, anyway. And ceremony. And the joy of knowing that even if you're alone, you know, you don't need to be lonely. An old story. This is an old, old story I heard decades ago. Um, I forgot what the run-up was to it was, but anyway, this guy has a chicken. And he wants to know if it's okay to kill the chicken, to cook it. And his teacher says, or this wise man says, yes, of course you can. Now just take the chicken someplace where nobody can see you kill it and kill it there. A week goes by. <laughs> Two weeks go by. And he comes back with the chicken. And the wise man says, what happened? And he said, wherever I was, the chicken was looking at me. The chicken would see it. You know, wherever we are, there we are. Wherever we are, there we go. Wherever we are is exactly, exactly where we are. So the problem happens when we want to be someplace where we're not. You know, it's a big problem for me because I, I love to travel. You know, if I wasn't confined by COVID and if half the world or three quarters or seven eighths of the world wasn't closed down, I'd be probably doing retreats in Europe right now. So here I am with either the worst company in the world or the best company in the world. And whether I'm my worst company or my best company really is pivotal, pivots on whether I'm listening to what's up here or what's here. You know, what's a courageous heart? A heart that feels no fear a heart that makes no judgment, a heart that accepts reality exactly as reality is. I think I read it last week, another poem from the Tao Te Ching is so beautiful for these times and so difficult. You know, and, and nothing that I'm saying is in any way, shape, or form meant to reduce the impact and the difficultness of what we're going through, because it is. You know, what this is kind of propelling me towards is a desire in some way, shape, or form to create a community someplace, to create a village, to create a place where whoever wants to come can live there. And we live the way people did 300 years ago in small village life. But anyway, this is from Lao Tzu, from the Tao Te Ching. Uh, it's the master sees things as they are without trying to control them. Right away there's a problem in that sentence because it says the master. And my feeling is that this is instructions to us for how to achieve mastery in our lives. Not that I want anybody to ever call me master or guru or teacher or anything like that. I'm not. I'm just sharing where I'm at, what's happening in my life, what I'm learning. But this is about mastery of your own life. So when you see the master here, when you hear the master, think of yourself as being the master or as having the potential for being the master. 
Master means teacher, by the way. The master sees things as they are without trying to control them. He or she lets them go their own way and resides at the center of the circle. I always wondered about the center of the circle. What is it? And, you know, one of the most powerful circles that we have on our planet is a hurricane. Tremendous wind. So great it could tear trees by their roots. So powerful it can rip houses to shreds, lift up a car and drag it 50 100, 200 yards. So powerful. What's in the center of that circle is stillness. Resides at the center of the circle. Inside there's that place that's still. That place that we can discover and connect to. And there there's perfect stillness, perfect peace even though the winds may be <laughs> just a few yards from you, blowing so hard. You can reside at the center of the circle. She understands that the universe is forever out of control. The universe is forever out of control. I can control certain things in my life. I can have the illusion of controlling other things. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I have a choice, coffee or tea. Or if I'm doing really well, water. If I'm doing really, really well, some juice. I have a choice. Lie in bed and think, or get up and meditate or take a walk. Certain choices we have. Keep my checkbook balanced. Don't keep it balanced. I don't keep it balanced because my accountant does that. Thank God, because I can't do it. I can do it, but I hate doing it. You know, we have choices. But if the universe is forever out of control, what does that mean? It's like everything outside of myself is barely in my control, if at all. You know, we know that things happen. The spiritual people say, oh, it's all happening for a purpose. A fucking meteor just hit me on the head. It's all happening for a purpose. You know, no. It's not in our control. What happens in the election, I can vote, but whoever wins is not in my control. What's happening for COVID, I can get really like pissed off about, but it's not in my control. How I respond to it is in my control. And that trying to dominate events goes against the current of the Tao. Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. The master sees things as they are without trying to control them. He lets them go their own way and resides at the center of the circle. She understands that the universe is forever out of control and that trying to dominate events goes against the current of the Tao. Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize there is nothing, 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 nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. It's a big recipe. It's a tall order, for sure. And yet possible. This is possible. And um, in that it's possible, it becomes something that each human being can do. What if I was content I may not like it, but I can be content. 
I may not like the fact that <laughs> I lost a relationship, but I can be content with that. I may not be content with, you know, the political situation right now. I may not like it, but I can be content with it by accepting exactly what is as it is. It doesn't mean don't do anything to change things. It means full acceptance of exactly what is in this moment. Full acceptance of exactly what is in this moment. If you're feeling lonely, full acceptance of feeling lonely. If you're feeling depressed, full acceptance of feeling depressed. Without, again, without labeling these things. To feel it in your body. And to notice that no matter what you're feeling, I don't care how sad a person gets. I don't care how anxious you get. I don't care how depressed you get. I don't care how um, lonely you get. Your next breath will come. As if by magic. Your next breath will come as if by magic. All by itself. All by itself. And what a beautiful thing that is. You know, can I have appreciation for my breath? Can I have gratitude for my life? Just as it is without trying to change a single thing. In this moment. In this you know, that song I sing in ceremony, Yar and Din, in this exact moment of now. Can I be content? And I really think that's what we're, if there's any purpose for what we're going through, this is it. You know, to evolve into creatures, beings, that are not in need all the time. To evolve into beings, you know, it's uh, Kabir calls it the wanting creature inside. This creature wants what it doesn't have. Somebody once uh, told me that what insanity is, and it's kind of the human nature, is we want what we don't have. And then once we get it, no longer want it. You know, but can we want that which is real within? Can we want that that makes us, helps us, opens up the realization that nothing is lacking? Nothing is lacking if you're content with what you have, if you're happy in the moment, if you accept everything with the awareness of a master. There's nothing that needs to change. And things will change. That's the whole premise of, of the Tao Te Ching and the Yi Ching is that, you know, you can't stop the universe from changing. You can't stop things from evolving. You cannot stop the motion of life happening. So where it's a difficulty is when I want things to change and they're not changing yet. And that's where difficulty arises. So be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are when you realize that nothing is lacking. And notice that the word realize is used there. Realize means to make real. When you realize that nothing is lacking, it isn't like, it doesn't say imagine that nothing is lacking. It doesn't say pretend that nothing is lacking. It essentially says nothing is lacking. When you realize that, then the entire world belongs to you. 
not in an ownership way, but in a way that at that point we get to move gracefully through this world without the wanting creature inside, wanting whatever it doesn't have. And this goes towards spiritual experiences too. If I want a spiritual experience, what I want is my imagination of a spiritual experience. If I want peace, what I want is my imagination of what peace is. If I want love, what I want is my imagination of what love is. And realizing what those are really is where we begin the process of mastery. We begin the process of entering the current, the stream of the Tao, of living life exactly as it is. And then we become perfectly powerful because we're masters of our experience. If I accept exactly where I am, that acceptance leads to mastery of exactly where I am. If my wanting creature wants everything to be different, or anything to be different than what it is, I'm a slave of that wanting creature. I'm a slave of that thing. And I don't want to be a slave, especially of what's up here, because what's up here on me, I don't know about all of you, but what's up here on me is pretty crazy. I want to be a student of the heart, you know. I want to be a student of the infinite possibilities that exist in a single breath or that exist in a conversation or that exist in community, that exist in what happens when we take our bandages off and we still dance. Oh, one thing I wanted to say that kind of continues the conversation about where we're at and what's going on now is that everything is really important right now as far as habits, as far as what we take into our bodies, as far as exercise. These are all also very much survival strategies. So if a person is, or if you're eating a lot of junk food and drinking a lot of coffee and, you know, smoking a lot of herb or whatever it is, that's your way out. Try to, except Christopher, of course. <laughs> um, you know, try to live life impeccably. Do your best because the wrong food causes depression, the wrong food causes stress. So everything is really important. And exercise. Because stress is our body's response to danger. And in nature, the body's response to danger comes from Either you, we called it the three F's in school. You fight, you flee, or you have sex. Three F's. So the body gets ready for that kind of stuff in response to danger or stimulation. And the danger is designed to make us or give us the ability and the strength to fight or flee. The other option between fighting and fleeing is your lunch or dinner for some other creature. So because stress is not that for us anymore, we're not walking down a jungle path and a tiger jumps out and we have to fight it off or run away or be lunch. 
We have to replicate what fighting off the tiger is, which is exercise. And it burns out a lot of the catecholamines and chemicals in our body that make our body sick from stress. So if you're feeling a lot of excessive stress, exercise. You know, in my own life, boy, the difference in the day when I wake up before the sun rises and hike versus when I don't is vast. It's a vast difference. And it's really important to give yourself the time and space to exercise. So get comfortable. And close your eyes and breathe. And allow yourself to feel where you are, to hear where you are, to breathe where you are. And take some deep, slow breaths, focusing on the breath. Letting all of the stories and difficulties relax. They'll be there later for you if you want them. But for now, just let them relax.
压人天，压人天，压人天。There is perfect love here and now. 压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天，压人天。The yarn din, I am more perfect. The yarn din, 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 yarn din. I am more perfect. The yarn din, 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 yarn din. Hi, I was gone. Yarn. Thank <laughs> you.